Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor. Today I want to talk about developing introverted intuition, your key tricks and your mechanisms that you can use to your advantage to use introverted intuition better. And you should know at first a lot of people can raise a lot of complaints about their introverted intuition. In the beginning it can be difficult to verbalize the thoughts and uh, the ideas that you have. It can be hard to explain how they work, it can be hard to understand them, conceptualize them properly, it can be hard to know what you're thinking and what it, what it means and all those things come with growth and with development. If you can reach a higher state of consciousness, introverted intuition will become a more easy process. You won't experience the alienation and the difficulties that can come with the beginning stages of introverted intuition. And you will get better at dealing with its darkness or its dark side, to put it like that. So what are we moving towards with introverted intuition? First we have to recognize that if we are an introverted intuitive type, intuition is our primary source of energy and introversion is our primary anchor. What that means is we need a steady stream of energy to actually feel active, engaged, interested in life. An introverted intuitive needs a steady stream of intuition a steady use of the imagination, openness, strangeness, <laughs> peculiarities, change, possibilities, and a chance to be in the unknown. Because these are the places where intuition truly blossoms. The intu intuitive functions don't work in environments where everything is set in stone and where every fact has already been proven countless times. Intuition needs to work in areas where there are still things to think about, still questions to be asked, still things to ponder. So, what you're looking for overall is an increased sense of flow and also a stronger sense of a concept or a theory behind what you do. You are looking for some kind of existential purpose and some kind of explanation for why you're here and for what you want and for what kind of a dream life you want to create. And then you want to transform yourself through this insight. What you're looking for is self-transformation, you know, to figure something out that will change you from the inside out. That will, some kind of revelation or insight that will be like a revelation that will make it easier for you to have good relationships, to uh, deal with work, to deal with reality, and to deal with the issues around you that you face as a whole. So the biggest struggle introvert intuition deals with is this response to the inferior function, extroverted sensing. Introverted intuitives struggle to, at first, deal with reality and nature as it is. There is, an, there is a draining aspect and a destabilizing aspect of nature to the introverted intuitive. That means it's perceived as a threat. When you are in the situation, when you are standing there and everything is happening and all the lights are on you and all the attention is on you, that's the biggest test you face as an introvert intuitive. Can you in these situations maintain energy? Can you maintain stability? Can you maintain security? Or do you get nervous, rattled, or overwhelmed? So often the case is a lot of intuitives develop small sensitivities. They struggle with certain situations, they avoid the spotlight, or they are very inconsistent. Often what I find is introvert intuitives can be very inconsistent. They can be very on. When you meet them, it can be like they only see you, they only have eyes for you, they're 100%, and then they become avoidant, detached, distanced, and they start disappearing away after just an hour after meeting you. So it can be that they are here, but they're not there. All of a sudden, they're gone. Where did they go? Are they angry with me? Did I say something wrong? You know, I made videos talking about an INFJ's problem with ghosting, and that can be a problem that a lot of introvert intuitive types share even INFPs and INTPs to some extent. So what you have to learn to deal with is being in the spotlight and being consistent with your energy and attention. And what you have to learn here is attention is a resource that you have in a finite amount. So what you have to learn to do is regulate it properly, manage it properly. It's the same goes for stress. Stress is a resource. You can deal with it to a certain extent but at another point, over that, it becomes overwhelming. You can't develop yourself to have a higher stress tolerance, but you can improve your stress management. 
And this is what all bosses should ask of their employees, you know, when you're hiring a person. Are you good with stress? Do you have a high stress tolerance? The answer should be, I'm good at dealing with stress and making sure it doesn't get on, in, on my nerves, you know. I'm able to say no, I'm able to maintain energy, I'm able to not be too much or too on, you know. Some people, they go in, like you have extrovert intuitives that go in too hard and too intense and just, like oh, talk too fast and get too in, engaged by it. And that's draining, that's stressing to the extrovert intuitive since intuition needs to be and work a little bit more behind the lines, a little bit more inquisitively, a little bit like a researcher. The same goes for introvert intuition here, and to a higher degree even so. Introvert intuition has to be mild. Its voice should be soft, not loud. The voice and the tempo should be calm, not rushed. And uh, what you see here is a lot of introvert intuitives going quite immaturely and expect they have to be more on than they are. Expect that they have to, be, have to be louder than they are. And that's often what causes a lot of issue. So, to develop introvert intuition, you have four key directions you can go towards. So you can focus on developing your dominant function. You can develop your ability to deal with the, your inspirational function, with your autopilot, and with your inferior function. So the inferior function, that's basically being able to set realistic expectations for yourself. How long can I be on in a social environment? How on do I need to be in this environment? Basically, can I uh, be a little more quiet? Can I sit down with a smaller group in the party? Can I uh, be there for a shorter time? Can I like, what can I do to make sure it's consistent and people know where I am or where I'm going? How can I make sure I'm consistent with my energy? But also, a part of it is developing your dominant function. That is, uh, how can I maintain a sense of intuitive fun in whatever I do? And what you mean there, what you need there is a strong introverted intuition and strong existential purpose. Why am I here? What am I trying to learn? What am I trying to understand? Is there something strange here? Can this environment help me understand something? Is there some? Is there? Is this a possibility for research or learning or insight? It's also important to develop the inspirational function. And that is, uh, you need to make sure you're not just rooted in theory, but that you also acquire patterns and make steady, st get a steady stream of opportunities on your uh, shoulders. You want to get new things happening around you. You want to surround yourself with what is possible. You need to put yourself in new situations. You need to nurture a sense of romance. And what that means is romance, to me, that's, being able to jump into something even if it is scary, even if you don't know what it is, even if you can't explain it. So as an introverted intuitive, don't be afraid to jump into and deal with extroverted intuition even if you'll never be able to completely understand how it works. See it through and think about it and expose yourself to it because that's a huge source of growth. Another important aspect is dealing with introverted sensing, and that's basically setting your autopilot script. So what you see here is the introverted intuitive needs to set a steady way of dealing with the known. Introverted sensing represents the known, what we already know, what we all have already proven, what we already know and are aware of. So often, for example, uh, we tend to brush over details, we tend to miss a lot of the details, we tend to skip over things, and that can lead to inaccurate guesses and improper use of theorizing. So if we can have a strong relationship to the known, often what tends to happen is we tend to become a lot more secure and steady in ourselves. So if you can nurture a sense of responsibility and a sense of wanting to prove your theories and wanting to back it up with data and knowledge and to use it to understand existing trends and patterns, that can also be a solid way to grow into our intuition. But once again here, you have to recognize there is a draining experience. This is going to be cutting your energy. So when you exp express and train this function, you're going to feel a little bit bored, and it's going, to, it's going to feel a little tedious, and it's going to feel a little bit difficult. So you have to manage your energy while you do this. Often what you want to do is you want to have a steady amount of energy that you can put into it. If you have and have already used intuition and are already full of existential purpose and already know theoretically what you're seeking to understand and what you're seeking to prove, then it's a lot easier to just absorb all those facts and just put it into your system and to make it a part of your bigger picture. 
The same goes for extroverted sensing. It's important to develop a strong sense of intuition to deal with sensing because when you have a strong sense of intuition sensing comes naturally what I see a lot of people do is they jump immediately to sensing thinking I have to improve my sensing but here they do it without energy and so they cannot maintain it so they have no motivation it's like going to the gym without motivation you end up being there for five minutes and then you leave but if you have some kind of intuitive purpose that comes from yourself, from who you are, from who you want to be, that will make it easier. So I hope this video can help you think about and re reason about uh, imp important development stages as, you're, as an introvert intuitive. And what you're really doing is you're becoming better at dealing with certainty and you're becoming better at dealing with uncertainty. You're becoming better to manage your energy and you're becoming better to manage a lack of energy. How do I manage my energy resources? How do I get energy? How do I make sure that I use and put my energy in the right things, into the right people, into the right situations? And how do I maintain my anchors, which is how do I maintain my sense of self? How do I tr listen to myself? How often do I give myself time for privacy? How often do I actually take my time to think about things and to reason about things? Those are all important questions and that will all help amount to translate to an improved introvert intuition. So if you like this video, leave a like, share and subscribe and thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video.